Welcome to No Filter HD, episode 87. Ballistic Coffee Boy here, your host. This time, guys, I'm going to be playing Comp 2. Uh, this is an awesome game that came out by Graphite Lab at Atari uh, a few days ago as of this recording. So this is my launch week exclusive for this game. I tried to do it on the same day, but I just couldn't. When this came out, I was too busy with work and stuff. Um, you see up here, I have some messages from my uh, fellow uh, Atari VCS friends. And I'll talk at the end about how you can add me, and I'll definitely add you back. So, uh, definitely a cool feature. So, let's go ahead and uh, purchase this game. It's $19.99. Uh, I'm definitely going to purchase it because I've heard and seen so much about it. It says, an artful reimagining of Pong. Control a Pong ball aching to break free of its life, stuck between two paddles. Explore a dangerous minimalist world armed with simple two-button controls. And uh, we have E rating for everyone, uh, compatibility, the... Uh, uh, cl uh, modern controller so let's go ahead and take a look at these pictures and the preview video down below uh, so excited to play this game I am stoked let's take a look Fantastic, guys. This trailer looks amazing. So this is about 165 megabytes. Uh, not too bad. So let's go ahead and purchase this. I'm going to block my payment info, like always. Um, so you'll see a little black box over the part of the screen. Uh, so I am so excited to play this. Now, I do know that this was beta tested by a few people, including my friend Ethercade. And um, I was not given a beta test code. I don't know why. <coughs> Not that I'm anything special, excuse me, but um, uh, he put my name forth, I guess, uh, and they just they just didn't do it. So uh, it's unfortunate because I wanted to play this game as well early, but uh, it is, you know, life goes on, whatever, right? Uh, but it doesn't mean this is not a great game. It's a fantastic game, and I cannot wait to show you this, guys. Um, it is so cool. So let's go ahead and dig right in here. Uh, so I'm downloading it here. It doesn't take very long at all. So um, I, I have to admit, I'm not the world's biggest Pong fan or Video Olympics. That's only because, and I talked about this in Expresso recently, it's a, a two-player game traditionally, right? And I never had that two-player person to play with because my sister hated Pong. So <laughs> that's who I played with when I was a kid. So uh, because of that, it kind of, you know, it kind of made me feel like it was not well, it wasn't one of my favorite games. Um, we did have it, I think. We just never played it. I think mom and dad played it because it was older. <laughs> but um, so this is a total reimagining. Now, Comp came out in 2021, I believe. That was the original version of this. I have not played it. So this is Comp 2. 
And apparently, um, this is a spiritual successor to Pong. So let's go ahead and uh, read some of these here and, um, uh, well, much as I can for you. Um, so we have languages here, which is awesome. I'm going to choose English. Now, I did select it, and it didn't, it didn't like, uh, it didn't stay, so I don't know what's going on there. So let's go ahead and go down to continue and hope it does. It did. Cool. So accessibility options. Um, we got some stuff here. Oh, there might be a bug or two in this game. I think that was one of them on that uh, on the language screen. So different color modes you can choose here, which I love. Um, really neat. Um, so, wow. Awesome. So I cannot wait to dig into this. Let's go right ahead. So I would uh, also want to just to say welcome to No Filter HD, Ballistic Coffee Boy here. Um, had a busy few weeks, as a lot of you know, just with work and stuff, ramping up. It's been crazy. So, um, yeah, just trying to survive right now <laughs> and put out content when I can. So, uh, this is awesome. So, I don't know exactly what to do here. I don't know if this is a demo or a little cutscene or if I'm really playing. I, I don't think I am. Uh, not sure what to do. Because these paddles are keeping up with me pretty fair. Let's see. So, try to hit some buttons here and see if anything I does does anything. Let's see. So far, not. Um, okay, not sure what to do. Oh, wow. Okay, so now I can move directions that's interesting wasn't expecting that so now i guess the this part of the game is to escape the paddles maybe it seemed like they have me enslaved in here for sure not sure what to do oh something in the middle what does that mean so let me go up to it and see if i can cross it maybe that's the point of that let's see like pick up a i don't know is that a power up what is that Kind of tricky. You got to bounce off the wall just right. Harder than it looks, folks. <laughs> oh, there we go. Are those tears? What is that? Definitely a feeling of being enslaved there, so you gotta hit the right button there. Oh wow. One outcast. <laughs> wow, neat. Looks like I got some kind of achievement down there. I didn't get to read that, but it said something about blue. So let's see. Oh, okay. So what do I do here? So if you hold down, I think it's the B button. I could be wrong. Uh down at the bottom. Oh, okay, so you can shatter it. Interesting. So let's see if I can continue past the screen. Oh, wow. Here we go. I broke free, guys. I am broken free officially. So unfortunately, it's sending me back over here. Let's see what I can do. <laughs> oh, crap. That one is not blue, so I can't break it. Okay, awesome. Here we go. Now we're getting somewhere. Now we're cooking with gas. Let's see. Whatever they used to say. <laughs> so I guess I go down this corridor to get to bounce it just right. So um, if you click, it's the A or the B button down there. When you click it, it changes the direction of the ball. And then um, if you hold, I think it's the RT button, um, the ball turns blue and you could bust through things, it looks like. So just kind of realizing that, pretty neat. You can change the direction you're going but only like up or down the direction you're going. So um, you are kind of stuck with those two motions whenever you do change direction. So I think I can bust that blue brick up here. Let's see, I think you have to hold down the LT button and the A or the B button here. Let's see if I can get back up there. Kind of tricky, I'm not gonna lie. That's pretty tricky. <laughs> Okay. 
Hmm. There we go. Awesome. Let's try to go down that corridor now. There we go. So you do have to aim it down that direction. Let's see. Okay. What is that? Oh, awesome. It's like a little escalator or... Oh, cool. Here we go. Now we're on the map. So, uh, oh. I think I've sent myself back to the first level. Let's see. I didn't do that on purpose. Let's see. Let me try to... Let's see. I might just go back. Let me see if I can get through it really quickly. Sorry about that, guys. <laughs> I'm just so, like, I'm excited to play this game. When I first started this up, I, I was just... I just couldn't wait. Um, I was, like, out of breath. <laughs> I love when new games come out like this. Like, new major con major games on many consoles. Let's go ahead and go back to 1, 2. Here we go. Now, this is on the PlayStation 4, the PlayStation 5, Xbox, Steam, um, and PC, of course. Um, I think I covered everything there, did I? Oh, and the VCS, of course. Uh, so, it looks like you can't go back on that thing. So, I was just trying to see what my options were. So we gotta break through this one. Oh, pushes it over, cool. Okay, that means we can get through there, hopefully. So let's go ahead and do that. Now we'll say this game is about, um, it's pretty much, um, I read somewhere that you will die a lot, so <laughs> I'm expecting to. I'm sure there's an achievement for that as well. Now this is tricky. I'm not sure how to get past that, I don't know. I guess you just bounce a certain way off that wall. And see, you're gonna die on the spikes. Ah, crap. So that's tricky. If you bounce into the spikes, you, you lose a life or you lose a turn. So, um, not sure how to get past that just now. Wow. Ooh, that's tough. So I'll just keep trying. <laughs> Maybe I need to bounce down and then change the angle. Once I can bounce off the lower left-hand side, I can control my movement through the corridor. So that's kind of what I'm trying to do, is getting down here in the left-hand corner of that of this area here. Here we go. Oh, awesome. I never thought I would get through that. <laughs> there we go. Now we're getting somewhere. So that I guess that's like is that a checkpoint, I guess. I think so. So these looks like those travel along the dotted lines as well. And I think the guess the goal is to get up there on top. I I will say the LT and the A or the B button down there that you use, uh, you can get a little confused sometimes about what you're pressing. That's kind of what's going on here. I'm getting the buttons mixed up in my head. So sometimes you got to take a breather, pause it, and think about it and get your orientation back because I just find that um, it's not natural, at least in the beginning, to get those down. So you need to play the game a little bit to get it down. So... That's a little bit what I'm doing here, trying to get down the movements of the buttons. Um, okay, so I need to, in order to press that down, I've got to be on top of it. So this one up here needs to be pushed to the right for sure. So let's go ahead and keep trying. <laughs> There's a key over there too, interesting. So, uh, so while I get through this little area, guys, I actually want to read you a little bit about this game. Uh, online, so I'm gonna go ahead and go to. I'm just gonna type in Comp2 and see what it says here. So it's on Steam. Let me go ahead and go to Steam. So it says Comp2, an artful reimagining of Pong. Uh, and this is what we read in the beginning. So I'm not gonna read that again, but um, February 20th, 2024, came out by Graphite Lab and Atari. Um, neat. It says about this game control a pong ball aching to break free of its life stuck between two paddles Explore a dangerous minimalist world armed with, armed with simple two-button controls Tap a button to change direction diagonally by 45 degrees and hold down a button to unleash a cathartic dash forward That's all you need to solve environmental puzzles and labyrinthine levels around each corner is a new challenge that will test your two-button and problem-solving skills a variety of difficult enemies and bosses help you mark your time as you navigate through 30 levels spread across four worlds. Comp 2 effectively captures the essence of the original 1972 Pong and its spiritual successor, the 2021 experimental indie title Comp. I've got to play combat for this, definitely. Uh, it says key features. Cerebral puzzling. The simple two-button controls um, belie complex 
and compelling gameplay. Use your reflexes and think ahead to avoid hazards. Flip switches and bounce your way through 30 tricky levels. Hidden collectibles push you to explore every inch of the minimalist maps. Now these collectibles are really hard to get. They're the little diamond shaped things you see here and there. They're always in a really bad place. Kind of like the collectibles in Million Greg. Almost impossible to get as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> I think I do get one though, eventually. It says a surprise around every corner. Comp 2 constantly delights as new features, mechanics, enemies, traps, and hazards are introduced as you progress deeper into the game. Don't get complacent. As soon as you master one aspect of gameplay, another is ready to challenge you, of course. Bosses. Four challenging bosses block your path at the end of each world. You will need to use all of your newfound skills to master their attacks and defenses. Don't worry. Death isn't the end in an arcade-inspired world. Quick respawn. Make sure you're back in the action in seconds. A serene soundscape. A soundtrack of ambient jams gets you in the groove and helps you keep your cool as you work your way through the minimalist maze. And finally, it says an emotional journey. An enigmatic story of doubt, fear, and self-acceptance told wordlessly through simple effects and gameplay. I love that. That's amazing. So the system requirements on Steam, if you're installing this there, uh, Windows 7 or newer, Intel Core Duo or faster, that's cool, goes back pretty far, 4 gigabyte of RAM, Intel HD Graphic 4600 or higher, and 230 megabytes of available space. It says uh, here, starting January 1st, 2024, the Steam client will only support Windows 10 and later versions. Okay, so you got to have at least Windows 10 to play this on Steam or on the PC. So, very cool. So, um... Here I am here, uh, trying to get through, looks like I, oh cool, awesome, so trying to see where I am here, I got the key, going down here, awesome, there's another little elevator thing to travel up, or escalator as I like to call it, so it's taking me to world 1-3, awesome, so so far, I'm, le I'm loving it, um, it does throw you a challenge on every new little subworld. of course, there's something else going on, um, I think I noticed that some of these gray bricks you can actually break. So there's might be um, special things in there or entrances to other rooms. I'm not sure. But I, I did notice earlier when I bounced off a wall that it kind of looked a little brittle. Like, a, like that. So here's an example right here. If you get to a dead end, guys, it's probably not a dead end. Especially if it seems like you need to go that way. Not It's not, not going to be that way in every room, but you know. Awesome, look at that. So let's go ahead and get through here and get to that checkpoint for sure. That was tough. And okay, now we got lasers. Okay, so these are lasers with little intermittent beams. It looks like they just change whenever they. Oh, there is a pattern. So that's good. So you got to recognize the pattern and jump through it. I'm sure if you get on that little wave there, you'll lose a life. So um, there you go. Oh, crap. I almost didn't make that. <laughs> There's a little checkpoint down there. Okay, this looks tough. So here are the little water areas that I was uh, hearing about a little bit. Little portals. So that bounces you off in different directions, it looks like. And so, okay. I wonder if you enter from a different side, if it gives you different choices of where to go. Hmm. I might just have to bounce over there and then bounce back to the right so I don't hit the wall. Let's see if I can get past this little trap. So this is the new thing introduced in this level, these little swirly things. And um, it looks like water. I don't know if it's a portal or what, but um, definitely interesting. So you have to hit the blue button to get in that. Or I'm sorry, you have to hit the blue button. You have to hit the RT button to get back there to get in because you turned the ball blue, which gives it a little power up. So you have to hit that before you enter in order to get the arrow and make use of these little portals. So keep that in mind. I'm not sure. Okay, so I can bounce. It looks like I can only go on the left on this side. So if you enter from the left, maybe you can bounce out. You can get out on the right, like this. Oh, well, I was trying. <laughs> so what I'm gonna do here is pause a little bit and think about it. <laughs> Look at my buttons and make sure I'm doing the right thing here. Okay, here we go. There we go. Okay, let's try to get through this. This is pretty tough. I love me a puzzler though. So let's see. Okay, not sure I'm supposed to do. Just have to keep trying different things, right? Wow. So my my good friend Ethercade on YouTube was saying recently um, that Graphite Lab seems like a really good buy for Atari as well. 
I agree. I mean, Graphite Lab has made a lot of these games they put out on other consoles, too. My, my only hesitation is they bought a lot, so I feel like they should chill, maybe, and buy it later. I don't know if they are going to. Um, they've been buying a lot lately, so I'm just kind of like, whoa, Atari, calm down a little bit. So, okay, it looks like I can go down there. Okay, good, awesome. Oh, let me turn my ham radio off, guys. Always goes off when I'm making one of these because it's quiet and then suddenly it turns on. So I just want to get to the checkpoint now. This is tough right here getting through all these little... Whoa. Okay. That was almost died there. Let's time that a little better. Oh. I'm not sure if I could have gotten through there or not. So these can be tough. You really got to time it just right. And if you don't make it, you got to try to move the direction of the ball because... Awesome. I made it. I think that was all luck. <laughs> that was tough. So let's go ahead and go down here and see what's going on. I'm feeling it's going to be difficult, whatever it is. So I was saying on my Newsline episode that uh, uh, Gen X, um, Gen X Grown Up had a video on this game the day it came out on the 20th where he gave away a game and he played the game and that was actually the morning it came out um, or whatever so um, I think or the night before um, he was probably in the beta testing team I was not um, so uh, but yeah I would love to be on your beta testing team Satari if you would like I mean I'm, I'm a fan and I love these games so definitely put me on your beta testing list for future games I would love that and I would love to talk with someone from Graphite Lab too if they're allowed to talk about the company um i would love to um so i might reach out to them for an interview possibly about this game and others because they made some great stuff right they made a lot of good stuff um so for atari and um a lot of them are favorites you know just amazing games um sneaky box as well has made a lot of great stuff and uh you know they made the recharge games i believe and um yars or yars recharge which i love um so all these companies are great. Of course, Atari bought Digital Eclipse recently, um, as well as a bunch of other stuff. Uh, they got some IPs from Accolade and uh, Big Boot Interactive and Microprose. Now, Microprose made the little text adventure games. So I've, I've got, um, is it Spellbinder or Spellbreaker? I have that. And I've got two or three other text adventures from the early 80s or early to mid 80s. They put out for the Atari Epic computers, and they're so fun. I feature those um, throughout my channel here and there, so check it out for sure. Um, but lots of fun ones um, that they put out. Lots of text adventures. I think they um, Infocom also put out a lot of those. Oh, I think Infocom did Spellbinder or Breaker. I'm getting the title wrong, but um, yeah, they did most of those. Microprose is known for other text adventures as well. So sorry, I didn't want to get that wrong. Um, and I think they made games later for the ST, which I don't know too much about right now, but I'm getting there with the ST stuff. So cool, you move this up, and then of course, now this, this is tricky in itself because there's a freaking laser right there. So you don't want to go creating into the laser all nilly willy or whatever. <laughs> you got to be really careful because it's, see, it's timed kind of weird. Like it, and sometimes you get trapped and you have to hit it because you can't go any other way but up or down, depending on what, um, if you're going right or left. So sometimes you'll get trapped in there and you'll see that happen to me a lot. Um, so yeah, this is tough. So I, I get to move two blocks without getting hit and make it through. I'm sure it's going to get worse as we go on, too. <laughs> so, uh, but just a fantastic game. I love it. So I wanted to go down and look and see if there are any reviews of this. Someone left to one. It looks like Fusion Flux left one. Uh, it's a simple yet fun and challenging. Not an incredibly long game, but definitely worth a buy. Now, I'd, I kind of thought that, too. It said only four worlds, and... Um, I'm going to say in this gameplay, guys, I make it pretty much to the end of World 1 and start World 2. takes me about an hour as a new player to get through it. I'm not editing this at all. I just cut out the long wait. There was a pause a minute ago. I cut out the five-minute wait when I had it on pause. But um, So, yeah, I made it to World 1 in about an hour. I threw World 1 in about an hour. So, um, because of that, I'm like, okay, 
I know it's going to get way more challenging, but I feel like there should be like at least eight worlds or something. I think four is a little on the light side for 20 bucks. That's just me. But um, I, I freaking love this game, though. So excited it came out. It looks great. I love the soundtrack, too, the minimalist soundtrack it was talking about. Minimalist. But I wanted to, um, if you're joining right now, I wanted to welcome you guys into Filter HD. I know often I've got viewers that will come in and out of chat while this is playing, so welcome. I'm so glad you're on my page and watching and supporting me by watching. Um, just being here, I appreciate you so much. Um, it's my pleasure. I love playing games on the VCS. I love showing the world what a cool console this is. And not just a console, but a PC hybrid. I've got, um, I've got Linux on mine, um, on my, uh, VCS, and I boot into it. Not all the time, but sometimes. I do know some friends, like my, my friend, uh, uh, Kaz, who does, um, who does the KRAZ Productions channel. He actually used the VCS as his main computer to help get through school, I believe. And uh, that's amazing. And my friend Luke from Luke's Awakening on YouTube, a great friend, he actually, um, he, he uh, uses VCS to uh, record gameplay on his, I think it was Windows, I'm not sure what he had on there, but that's pretty, it's pretty neat. So you can install operating systems on it. Now I have a four terabyte external Western Digital Drive I hooked up to mine. I know that's overkill, but it was sitting around for like three or four years and I hadn't used it. So I think it was that long. So I was like, okay, I'm just going to hook this up and it worked great. I moved all my files over because I was out of space in my VCS for a while. I would have to delete games, right? Because that's how bad it was. I was just using the sock storage on it, which is not much. So maybe, is it 20 or 30 gigs? I don't even know. Uh, no, not gigs. <laughs> um, yeah, maybe 20 or 30 gigs. I can't remember. But mine was full. So I was deleting games, and that's just a shame. So what I did is I just hooked up the Western Digital external drive and... The system actually formats it for you. Well, it asks you first. So it does walk you through it immediately when you hook it in. And um, I, I formatted it. And then you go in there and basically you go to storage under settings and just move your games over to it. Now, I, I have to, I'm going to be honest here. I did lose some save states in my games. Not all of them, but some. And uh, around the time I did that, they also had big updates out for a lot of games. Whenever I did that, I, I lost my, my progress. Um, and some games, not all. I'm not sure if that's how that works or if that was just my mistake, but um, yeah, I lost my saves on some games, which is fine. Um, I, I don't typically finish games uh, anymore with my channel. There's just no time to. Although one day I hope to just kick back and finish all these games and enjoy it whenever I don't have videos to make constantly about news or whatever. So one of these days in the future. But for right now, I'm enjoying playing in my VCS. I love this game. It is pretty cool. It's actually a little more than what I was expecting. I didn't think it was going to be this polished. Um, now, it does have a couple of bugs I noticed on the language menu. It didn't select English. Uh, no big deal. Um, I did notice. There's like one other one right now, and I can't remember what it is. I noticed, but uh, oh, there's a point in the game whenever, and, and you'll see it toward the end. There's a point in the game whenever I'm bouncing back and forth off a wall on something and I can't even move. It's like trapped in a loop. Now, it does break out of that loop. It just takes time, but I, I think that was a bug because I tried every button and I could not get out of the loop of bouncing off of something and back off something else. And I was like, what the heck? So I did notice that. But um, overall, though, it, it's fantastic. Those bugs, bugs can be ironed out for sure. You know, I have every faith. So uh, just a really fun one. Wow, this is a tough little area. I have no idea how I'm going to get out of this. <laughs> so while I'm doing this, guys, um, I want to go ahead and read you a little bit. Um, there are some uh, comp reviews out there. Here's one from Slack News. Or I'm sorry, Shack News. It says, Comp 2 Review. Not one, but two buttons. Uh, Atari Self referential sequel to an indie banger is that ambitious in an odd way but is it good and this is by lucas white from february 19 2024 at 6 a.m it says i respect atari's hustle lately if you look at its output it goes beyond the usual re-releasing classic collections over and over the classic gaming giant has taken its old evergreen ip and tried twisting them around a little bit 
with titles like Pong Quest or Atari Mania alongside modern refreshes such as in the Recharge series. Comp 2 feels similar, but cut from a different kind of cloth, an indie cloth. Oh, I love that. This game has vibes, or at least it front loads the audience with vibes. Comp 2, uh, sorry, Comp 2, billed as a strange sequel to the original Pong, starts as a normal Pong game but with an eerie quiet. The fishable lens effect and grayscale colors betrayed by flashes of bright blue evoke something. Without enough time to digest these mysterious vibes, the greater game reveals itself a la frog fractions, but way less abstract. I have no idea what that means. As your ball seems to escape the confines of Pong, only to find itself in the lab labyrinthian basement slash dungeon of, I don't know, video games, hell, or something. Hell is other paddles. Comp 2's gimmick is simple. You're a Pong ball on the run, bouncing around traversal style puzzles. Think Super Meat Boy or Celeste, but with a ball that doesn't stop moving unless it hits something. You can only intervene in two ways, changing your trajectory 90 degrees or charging a small boost. You'll navigate around hazards, hit switches, break things, swim, and die a lot. That's a fun concept, but about halfway through I couldn't help but feel like something was missing. So I did what made the most sense to me and try and figure it out. I bought the first comp, and the pieces fell into place pretty quickly. The first game was a very small indie game that originated at Newgrounds of all places. The vibes were more coherent, with the Pong ball slightly emoting, clearly tired of the daily pains of being Ponged? All day. You escape, and after braving the hour or so of hazards and horrors, you obtain the sweet release of simply escaping. It's really good stuff, and apparently Atari agreed and bought the IP to make a sequel. I don't have all the details here, admittedly, but Comp and Comp 2 do not share developers, so. Uh, it says here, um, Sequelitis. Back to the sequel, and I get it. Sequel means do it bigger and better, especially with publisher muscle behind the scenes. The first comp only had the trajectory button, so comp 2 has two buttons. The first comp only had three worlds, so comp 2 has more worlds and more boss battles and more other stuff. But what comp 2 doesn't have is more juice. In fact, there is actually less juice in the sequel compared to the first one. That whole thing about lighting and lightning in a bottle holds true once again. Frankly, being bigger works against comp 2. For some reason, the ball moves a lot slower in this one, and the stages are much bigger as well. Perhaps it's meant to be more accommodating and easier for players to digest the challenges. In practice, though, it's mostly dead air. The ball goes faster and the levels are tighter in comp to facilitate a flow state. Failure happens. You pop back at the nearest checkpoint. You try again. Normal game stuff. Comp 2 slowing it down and blowing up the real estate makes things like small mistakes feel like torture. <clears throat> Miss a corner? Now you get to watch as the ball slowly heads back to the start so you can turn back around. Get killed at the end of a brutal battle? Sequence? Do it all over. Even the breather parts between the hazards. Mess up underwater? Now it's what I just said, but even worse. Now that's not exactly true because um, uh, whenever I defeat the boss here at, um, at the end of the uh, gameplay, um, it does take me back to that area, but the boss is dead. So that that's not exactly true. In my hour and change with comp, I died a lot, but I never felt frustrated. After a few hours of comp 2, every time I messed up, death or not, I wanted to scream. I could see the logic behind the shift in momentum, and it's fine on paper, but an execution that undermines its own gameplay hooks. And it doesn't help that the vibes, which were immaculate in comp, feel shallow in comp 2. It's eerie and sinister, and invokes more in-house Atari imagery. It gets weirder that, uh, than the first one by a long shot, but it feels like it's doing these things because the first game did them and doesn't capture why. It's very Sharknado, you feel me? Bigger isn't always better. So obviously he didn't like this game. <laughs> what felt snappy and thoughtful in comp mostly feels sluggish and vapid in comp too. It's a real shame because there is plenty of neat stuff here. A lot of the challenges are cleverly designed and could have been a lot of fun if the interact if the interactions were different but it still feels like a gimmick dropped on top of something interesting with a corporate sticker slapped on the back now i disagree with that 
Uh, this is someone that seems like they probably don't like quote unquote new Atari, in my opinion. If anything, I'm grateful to Comp 2 for introducing me to the concept and eventually to experiencing the first Comp. I can see why that game hit the way it did and inspired Atari to pick it up and try its own version. It's a cool subversion of one of gaming's oldest standing innovators, but it feels short sighted to hand the project off to a different set of hands when the first set is the one that made the magic happen in the first place. And there's genuine effort here, but the vibes are off, man. That's by Lucas White, contributing editor at Shack News. Now, I do not agree with that review, um, I have to say. It says Comp 2 is available on February 2024 for. Sorry, 2024 for PC, Nintendo Switch, PlayStation 4, PS5, Xbox One, Xbox Series XS, and of course Atari BCS. A code for the PC version was provided by the publisher for the purpose of this review. Yeah, any three under the bus. So you guys should send the codes to people like me that really appreciate these games. Uh, so that was kind of a bad review. Uh, let's see what else is out there. Now, we do have a review on Nintendo Life. Let's read that because I love that site. Before I do that, I'm going to go back and look at the game because I've been reading. So here, oh, this is a tough area. So here we have these little propeller things and these breakable areas. You have to break them without touching the area again because it disappears. And time it just right because, and see that little bonus over there? There's no way I'm getting that. There's no way, man. There's, yeah, I'm not going to do it. So good. I got past it and I'm at the checkpoint. Awesome. So, um, so this is awesome. So let's hit this and, oh, wow. So it changes, it, uh, inverts that whole situation with the, uh, with the little sticky things on the wall. What is that? Stalactite. <laughs> and so that's cool. She can get past it. Okay, so while it's doing this, I'm going to go ahead and read a little bit more. So Nintendo Life had a review out um, on 2024, and uh, it says Ping Pong. And this is on the Switch eShop, it says. Version reviewed North American. This is by Aldi Reynolds. Uh, Monday um, of this week, so that would be uh, February 19th at 4 a.m. Wow, early. Oh, these people are in England, that's why. But I've been a I've been a I've been a contributor on Nintendo Life for like 20 years now. I've been on there forever. My name is Grumble, so you could find me on there and add me or whatever. <clears throat> anyway, it says when Atari first announced Comp 2 as a reimagining of the arcade classic Pong, we must admit to feeling somewhat skeptical of the similarities. Yet after completing all 30 levels in the Graphite Lab developed Puzzler, we're convinced that it is very much the spiritual successor that Pong deserves. Oh, finally a good review. It's a game that only increased its grip on us further, on us the further we progressed until we could think of little else. Combining simple gameplay with devilishly difficult labyrinths to provide an experience like no other. Well, except its immediate predecessor, of course. The first comp unfortunately skipped the Switch entirely, but its sequel is well worth checking out if you're a fan of action puzzlers. The general gist is that you directly control the ball from Pong, which has decided it's had enough of being whacked back and forth between two paddles, and wants to explore the outside world. The thing is, the outside world is a grayscale labyrinth full of traps, enemies, and bosses, and so it's up to you to guide the little ball to safety. Kind of a parable for life, right? When you go outside, shit happens. <laughs> That was my own input, by the way. So, uh, going back to this, it says, Controlling the ball requires the use of just two buttons, A and ZR. This is on the Switch, keep in mind, so on the Joy-Cons, which I hate. It says, The ball will move up and down automatically at 45 degree angles, and a simple tap of A reverses your direction, while briefly holding down ZR gives a short burst of speed. While you can influence the vertical direction of travel, the ball will only move in one direction horizontally until it hits a wall. As such, navigating the environment efficiently is a case of bouncing the ball around and predicting its projected destination, much like t lining your shot with the paddle and pawn. This feels intuitive for the most part and proves itself a novel and enjoyable means of traversal, though there are admittedly a few rare moments where you'll be stuck going in one direction before you're able to turn around. Yep. Then you've got the boost ability. Overall, the ball in Comp 2 moves slightly slower than it did in the first game. This in itself might prove annoying if you're familiar with Comp, but the addition of the boost makes the slower pace much more palatable. More than simply increasing your speed, however, the boost ability allows you to slam the ball into blue colored blocks or walls, smashing them to pieces or moving them across the environment. Naturally, such blocks are often placed near spikes or lasers, so lining up your shot correctly is imperative to avoid careening into deadly traps. 
As you progress, Comp 2 introduces new types of environments that directly affect how you can, or rather can't, control your ball. There are specific areas in which you're unable to manually change direction entirely, others that block access to the boost ability while traveling underwater completely alters the ball's physics. Holding down the boost button underwater will cause the ball to sink, while tapping A enables, uh, sorry, enables you to swim up to the surface. The variety on offer is impressive, and it makes for a consistently engaging experience throughout all 30 levels. That's cool. Of course, it's not all just about making it from A to B. To do so, you'll need to flip switches, move barriers, trace patterns, guide enemies to specific locations, and more. After every 10 levels, the game also throws a boss character at you, totaling four across the entire game. While, the, while these don't provide a huge amount of challenge, they're unique in design and the method required to dispatch each one is always fun and interesting. One of them is even based on an iconic Atari RK2600 title, which we won't spoil. Needless to say, it was a delightful surprise. Awesome. Speaking of difficulty, Comp 2 gets fiendishly tricky during the later stages, though the challenge never comes particularly close to Graphite Lab's previous effort, Mr. Run and Jump. That one is likely to make you tear your hair out at multiple points, but Comp 2 strikes a decent balance, providing a hefty challenge without tempting you to check your switch out of the bedroom window. You can probably expect to get through the game in as little as 3 or 4 hours, though it'll take longer if you're keen on grabbing all the optional collectibles. If we're being picky, we would have liked maybe another 10 to 20 levels, but that's testament to how good the core game is. I agree with that. There is only one type of collectible, a sort of tear-shaped trinket, and there's one hidden in every level. Grabbing them is very much a case of risk versus reward, as you're often tucked away in areas chock full of spikes or other hazards, ain't that the truth? Other times you might need to activate a switch and backtrack slightly to find the collectible. There's definitely a hint of Metroidvania in Comp 2 at certain points, and we'd be curious to see if Graphite Lab could expand on the concept. In terms of visuals and performance, Comp 2 prides itself on gameplay above all else, but that's not to say that it doesn't still look nice. The grayscale environments are certainly basic, but when compared, sorry, when combined with bright blue to indicate intera interactive elements, it makes for a pleasant and perhaps more importantly easy to parse experience that doesn't drop a single frame throughout. There's a fish eye filter on by default, but you can disable this at any point if you're not keen on it. The audio is also well done. The ambient soundtrack is consistently relaxing, while the gentle talk talk sound of the pong ball could almost qualify as an ASMR trigger. Wax some headphones on and you'll be in heaven. Conclusion Comp 2 is an excellent and worthy reimagining of Pong that honors the classic arcade game's legacy while providing a unique experience for folks with no nostalgia for Atari's seminal masterpiece. It offers a consistently interesting and engaging means of traversal with a great variety of obstacles and puzzles to overcome throughout the 30 stages. We would have liked a few more levels in the end, but this is really just an indication of the quality on display here. If you're into quirky action-focused puzzlers with a unique hook, then Comp 2 is definitely worth your attention. So it says Joys, excellent arcade puzzle gameplay, a strong variety of puzzles on offer, boss encounters are great and will delight longtime Atari fans, visuals, audio, and performance are all on point, optional, collect uh, sorry, optional collectibles provide additional challenge, and the cons, it says rare instances where you might get stuck going in one direction. Another 10 to 20 more levels would be more than welcome. I agree. I think that's fair. So this this uh, guy gives it 9 out of 10. Excellent. I think that's a great score. Um, I really do. So um, I really um, agree with that 100%. So I didn't go around fishing for a positive review or anything because I'm an Atari fan. I try to be skeptical like anyone else and, you know, um, I don't love every Atari game, okay? I've talked about this before that kind of a different one, but um, this is amazing and I would give it a 9 out of 10 as well. I think it's a perfect score. Um, it's not perfect, but it's damn near will damn near will perfect, right? Um, I do think the ball moves slow, but I mean, I didn't play the first, so it's fine with me. I don't see a problem with that. That's not an issue with me. Uh, now these boss levels like this is the first boss. This is awesome So you're gonna knock out the blue by breaking those and then the white um, You break through those as well, and then the boss is over there with the hearts and um, You may have seen that earlier that that uh, The thing with the hearts, but yeah, you want to bust that and then you make it through the top to get through 
Now I paused it here to kind of get myself, get my hands a breather. <laughs> so um, I'm not editing that out because it doesn't last too long. But yeah, these boss levels are awesome. And I, I think this is a boss level. I think it takes me a while to be honest because I spend a lot of time here going back and forth. This is difficult. You gotta time everything right. Oh, and this is where the game, um, uh, where um, it has an issue. Uh, that's kind of why this might take a little longer to get through. So there's a there's a point right here you'll see in a minute where I can't move. It's it's bouncing between two areas and I cannot do anything. I think it's bouncing between a spike and the starting point over there on the left, that white right there. So I get stuck and I can't hitting any button will not let me move and I don't know what happened. So you'll see that here in a minute, but I definitely agree with that review. That was great. And those were two random reviews I found, so I didn't go looking for particular ones. So interesting. Um, and let's see, this is gonna take me a little bit to get through this stage, just trial and error, right? Um, so bear with me. But while this is doing this, I wanna go see if there's anything else I can read about this game. Because I want you to know what people are saying. So I already read you uh, the review from, um, was that? We looked at the Steam page. Oh, we looked at Shack News and now Nintendo Life. Let's see what else is out there. Um, so IGN has something up about Comp 2. Let's see. Uh, let's see here. Okay. Oh, it's got a summary. I don't see a rating on this. But, um, oh, it's showing the announcement story from August 30th, 2023 when it was announced. So, n so no review. I don't think. Let's see. Oh, there are reviews. Wait. Okay, there aren't any yet. So anyway, <laughs> that was IGN. IGN never uh, fails to uh, disappoint me every time I go there. Uh, so let's see what else is out there. So the Epic Game Store is talking about this. So I think this is on Epic as well. I didn't know that. Uh, let's see here. Ba -ba -ba. So you can save 50% on comp on Steam, it looks like. Looks like there was an announcement about a week ago talking about that. Uh, let's see. Uh, okay, Yahoo Finance. Oh, they were talking about when it was announced on August 29th. Okay, okay. Polygon has a comp review from February 17th. Let's take a look at that. This will be the last one I read you. I know it's interview overload, but I want to read you some different opinions about this game. It says comp. Uh, sorry, comp review. The best Pong cinematic universe of 2021, and this is on Polygon.com. Pong's ball has had enough of being your plaything. <laughs> by Ben, uh, by, sorry, by Ben Kuchura, K-U-C-H-E-R-A, February 17, 2021, 12, 10 p.m. EST. It says, no one asked for the Pong cinematic universe, but the PC game comp is here to provide it anyway. It may be one of my favorite games of the year so far. Oh, this is from 2021. So this is talking about the original Pong. Awesome. So let me just go ahead and read this because I haven't played it yet. Uh, it says, I was mesmerized by the game's opening moments. It looks like a clone of Pong, but I wasn't, I wasn't in control of either paddle. I did realize that I could hit a button and change the direction of the ball. However, and that became my first challenge, making sure the ball got past those paddles because I was sick of being hit back and forth. That's what we experienced in this one. I guess they copied that over. It's time to escape, and that escape is going to take up the rest of the game, which can be beaten in two to three hours, depending on your skill level. It says the world of comp is a mostly black and white maze of obstacles and enemies, and the only way the player can interact with it is by hitting that one button to change the direction of the ball. That's it. It's a matter of timing, patience, and visualizing angles. Everything comes down to where the ball is headed, where it will go if you hit the button to change its trajectory, and where it needs to go next to stay on the path to freedom. In a world of forever games and constantly updated releases that all but require you to play every day to keep up, Comp is a welcome respite, the sort of game you can play for a few hours, have fun, and then put it down. The game has perfected its own limited scope, but it's not about being big, it's about being good. Comp contains no secrets or hidden areas, the game's designer, who goes by Stuffed Wombat, wrote in a blog post. After completing the game, players get access to a more challenging version of each level. Completing all challenges will unlock nothing. The reason to play? Because video games are fun. There is no grind and no reminders about showing up tomorrow. If you quote-unquote die, there's nothing lost except a little bit of time. 
even so, there are difficulty settings, and they're a wonder of clever. They're they're a wonder of clever design. For example, you can choose to zoom the camera out to see the entirety of each level, or you can give yourself a line that shows where the ball will go when you hit the button. There's also an option to just turn on in invincibility if you don't want to worry about it. You can toggle any of these settings at any time. That's also true in this comp too. You can turn on, turn on invincibility, but I didn't want to do that and cheat. So it says comp is modest in scope, but precise in its ability to execute on its goals of being a simple, clever, enjoyable game you could buy for a few bucks, six ninety nine, and finish in a few hours. At least part of the game's taught levels and control may be due to stuffed Wombat's constant revisions and recreations of the game. He made, remade, and honed it for years. Stuffed Wombat estimates that it is the seventh version of Comp. Wow. The game's rocky journey involved business deals going south, a lack of resources, unhappiness with previous versions, and some welcome support from Stuffed Wombat's parents. Yet it prolonged, sorry, yet it's prolonged, painful, sounding period of transition hasn't made comp feel fussed over or over designed instead it feels perfected as if it popped into existence this way that's awesome in his explanatory blog about the game Steph wombat was also careful to note that comp was not just his work this is a quote here it says i cannot have made comp without Clovelt, Britt Brady, and Morocco and i would kindly request that you credit all four of us if you cover comp he wrote he then detailed each of their contributions to code cleanup art and um, sorry. He then detailed each of their contributions to code cleanup art and audio. In addition to these collaborators, Steph Wombat had a support system to help him through the game's rough development, and he credits that as well. Now, three and a half years after starting Comp is finally being released. He wrote, "The main reason for that is that I have access to a very strong and very forgiving support system." It goes on to quote him here. It says, My parents encouraged me to follow my dreams. When my dreams broke me, they encouraged me to set them aside. They helped me recover. Then they encouraged me to try again. Comp would not exist without them. Emmy should be very happy comp exists, it says. Awesome. So that is really great. I love that. That was from uh, uh, Polygon from February 17, 2021 by Ben Kuchura. That's awesome. I don't even want to check out the original comp because I've never played it. So here we are, guys. It looks like I have gone on to World 2-1. That's amazing. I finally beat that frustrating boss. Uh, but it was it was awesome, though. I loved how it was designed. So I will play a little bit of World 2 here, not not too much more. And then I'll go look at my friend's uh, list on my BCS, talk about that a little bit. And then I'll, I'll get my final say at the end here, which I'm sure you know what that's going to be. So um, cool. Let's see what... What, what awaits us in the second world. Two onwards. Wow. Okay, this looks pretty hard right here, this area. <laughs> and I kind of want to take a breather. So I think here in a minute, I'm going to stop my gameplay, as I said, and go look at my friends list. Talk about that a little bit before we close out. But yeah, this looks tough. There's a key up there. There's spikes. I'm not in the mood right now, so I think I need to take a break. <laughs> I'm just kind of like, eh, this looks tough. Looks like you gotta bounce off the center down there underneath that area, but that's gonna be tough. You gotta bounce off the wall, see, right, 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 just like down there. And unfortunately, I keep changing direction. Ugh, that's annoying. So let's go ahead and quit this. Let's look at the uh, settings menu. Okay, here's the immensibility and the hints. The hints are off. I have maybe I should turn those on. Uh, different things here, really awesome. Let's go ahead and look at the uh, level select. So you can go in here anytime and re and, and replay what you've done. I've only gotten one of the thirty trinkets already. The bonuses. Here's the accomplishments. Looks like I got three out of twelve. I feel like it needs more in this area too. Um, maybe two or three times as many, so kind of short accomplishments list. Maybe it'll expand it out in a future update. But I got checkmate, it looks like. Uh, or no, I'm just going through it. Um, I've got, oh, I got gone. I died a hundred times. Well, yeah, you can probably guess. You, you, you've seen every single one of those a hundred times, right? So, 
And I got blue, uh, complete the intro, so <laughs> got a couple of achievements there. Uh, so let's go ahead and let's see what else is down here. I'll, I, I will look at the credits. Here we go. Let's take a look at these. And I'll be quiet while this goes by, so here we go. Well, I love this. It says a very special thanks to you who keeps moving forward no matter what. That is so inspirational. <laughs> I love it. What a cool game. It really does speak to the human condition, right, of breaking through a challenge in life and facing all the other obstacles. I, I love how that was prefaced. I think that's great. I don't think it could have been any better. So definitely loving it. So let's go ahead and, okay, for some reason, looks at my VCS. I'm not sure if this is a glitch, but it kind of is stuck here for a little bit. And it does restart eventually. It did save my progress. But um, I don't know what's going on. So maybe a bug in the game it needs to be ironed out. Of course, it's the first few days of release. So we expect this now and then. So let's ride this wave out here. But um, I'm about to take a look at my friends list on VCS. So um, if you have a VCS, definitely add me to your friends list. My name is Bold. 5002 I believe I'll double check here in a minute <laughs> and uh, you can add me I'll add you back as long as you're not some crazy person as I always say um, you can actually see when friends are playing now online I think with a recent update um, and that's helpful because you can play games with them and chat with them when you know they're online so that's a really good update much needed what I do think we still need Atari in the VC um, Atari on the VCS is we actually need a bootloader. Oh, here we go. It's restarting now. We need a bootloader because we do have the PC mode capability. And if you have your stick in there, it's going to automatically start it up. So you have to unplug it if you don't want to do that, if you want to go to play the VCS. I think that's kind of a wasted opportunity. Let's put a bootloader in there so you can just choose. I think that would be great. Also, some people are having a modern controller drift issue. I'm not sure. That, that was reported by a couple of my viewers. I'm not having that issue, but I am having the issue where on the 7800 Atari Age games where it will restart the game for some reason. So, not all of them, but some. So, here's my good friend, the Cuckoo 15832. He's saying, Is there a. Okay. Okay, yeah, he's asking the question right now that I just gave you the feedback on. I remembered that. So. Um, basically, I'm telling him um, I'm going to check it out, maybe ask Atari about it. There definitely needs to be a bootloader screen because he's saying here, um, is there a way I can start the VCS without having to remove USB PC mode drive out every time? If I don't, it goes into PC mode. I wish it would boot only when I click on the PC mode app. I think that's that's a wise ask, right? That's, that's uh, understandable, and I agree. So Atari, please address that. Um, you know, I kind of didn't think about that before, but it's true. If your if your uh, thumb drive with your uh, operating system on it, um, if you made it yourself or bought it from Atari, if it's plugged in, it's going to boot directly into PC mode. So there's no way to get past that, and I think that's that's true. So let's go ahead and uh, let's put that on the agenda, Atari, to update. 
I'm just saying you're a good question. Uh, but again, when you add friends on here, you can see the recently play games. See this dude played, uh, he was on Chrome recently, played some YouTube, maybe watch one of my videos, <laughs> and played Atari 50, which I got for half off recently on here. I got it for the Switch first because it wasn't put out on the BCS until a few days later. So let's check out who else is in here. So we have uh, Hugh Jass794523 asking about uh, no news on the controller test app. So I did talk about that um, whenever I talked about my big review of the, sorry, the big OS update that came out around December. I had an episode out when I talked about that. I did talk about the controller test app. I don't know if he's meaning there's an issue with it, so I'll have to go check it out. So thanks for uh, bringing that to me. Um, and uh, you can see here his recent games are Asteroid Recharge, Savage Halloween, and Montezuma's Revenge. Great picks. His most played are A Path to the Princess, Aka R, A Savage Halloween, Great Picks. And his favorites are Antstream Arcade, Thrustlander, and the VCS Vault 1. Great ones. Definitely get Vault 2 as well. I think Vault 2 has a lot of the M Network games in it. Not the ones they acquire, but the ones that were they had already, I guess. So, pretty cool. So, I'm telling him here a reporter on it during the big VCS update. I am using my controller to type with. If you have a keyboard hooked up, it will go by much faster. I'm I'm a touch type speed typer, so this is excruciating to me. But <laughs> but I'm trapped in my area on the couch, and I don't want to move to get the keyboard. So it is what it is, y'all. So just suffer through it with me. But uh, um, again, um, I appreciate you guys watching so much. Um, in the future, I'm going to be playing. Whatever games come out next on the VCS, I do know my good friend Obsidian Contraptions working on Skyfrizz on getting that ready for the VCS here in the next, I guess, month or so or a few weeks. He is, is going to be on that Atari show or Atari Newsline. We're going to talk to him about it when that happens. And there's other games coming too. So Atari Joe, um, my good friend here, Atari Joe1312346 says uh, he was responding to Days of Doom that I got. And it says... He says, cool, I'm not sure if they already added the firmware update yet. I think they should add a chat feature where you can be notified and chat while you're playing. I think that's a good idea, too. Um, I do think you can see when friends are online. See his icon up there, the little gray circle? That turns green, I think, when they're online or something. And you can see when they're online. So that's a nice addition. It would be nice if you could chat during games. Like, I think some Xbox games are like that, right? So that would be neat. I'm not sure if that's doable with their current OS, but they should definitely look at that for future iterations of the OS. Definitely would be welcome. So about at the end here, guys, again, I just want to thank you so much for watching No Filter HD. Comment, like, and subscribe. Let me know what you think about Comp 2. My, uh, okay, my official rating for it after playing it now for an hour would probably be a A-. I, I agree with a Nintendo Life Review, 9 out of 10. I think there's room for improvement. It needs a few more levels. It could use some more achievements. They need to fix those few little bugs I talked about. Other than that, it's fantastic. I love it. So definitely going to give it an A minus for the Atari VCS. I typically don't score my games when I do these, but I'm going to start doing that. Just great. Definitely grab it today. It is worth every penny. Thank you so much, guys. I appreciate you. Be a good person. Get your Java and go play some freaking Atari. See you next time, guys. Bye now.
You are watching Ballistic Coffee Boy. Boy.